I, I say this to the people of Wisconsin. We're smart. We, we know what's going on. Republican candidate for Governor Tim Michaels in Kenosha this past week touring parts of the city two years after the police shooting of Jacob Blake that led to protests, violence and riots. That same day, Governor Tony Evers announced a plan to use some of the state's projected $5 billion surplus to cut taxes. Part of the $600 million package that would need Republican approval includes a 10% tax cut for individuals with adjusted gross incomes at or below $100,000 a year and $150,000 for joint filers. The plan would also repeal the minimum markup on fuel and cap co-pays for insulin at $35. You've seen what Republican leaders have said in response. This is essentially dead on arrival and, and going nowhere. Yeah, unfortunately, but uh, I'm still hopeful and uh, I'm hopeful they'll come up with a plan. You know, the idea that somehow this has to go through uh, a budget season where we're looking at a gazillion things instead of a small number of things, that's just not true. If, if they wanted to provide tax relief to the people of Wisconsin now, they could do it now. It would take a day to come in and get this done. Senate President Chris Kapica joins us now. Welcome to the show. Good to see you. It's good to be here. You heard the governor. He said Republicans come in right now and do tax reform. So why not do that? I think there's a couple of problems you've got. And you've seen some of the leadership in the legislature talking about this already. But number one, the way that the proposal came out, the, the legislature is never in session at this point in time because of the, or the, um, the election cycle. So we're always very careful. The reason historically we haven't come into session is because we're in election season and we want to make sure that we don't get ourselves into trouble with running legislation for political purposes. So we, we never meet during this time. Uh, and the governor put this out. I, I think it's, kind of, it's interesting. The governor knows that we will not come back into session because we're not in session right now. So he releases this plan knowing that the reality of it is 0% happening. So when he released this plan, I, I, I kind of sat back and laughed. I'm like, he doesn't want us to pass this because this kind of goes against what he has actually done. If you look at his budgets where he's proposed billions of dollars of tax increases, it just doesn't line up with who he is. And to some of these actual provisions, Republicans have supported it. If you take away and look at individual pieces, you look at tax cuts, repealing the minimum markup, those are things Republicans have gotten behind. Yeah, there's, there's different nuances to that. And one of the things that Republicans have always said is we want to make sure that if we put tax reform in place, these one-off tax releases aren't necessarily good. They don't really benefit we want long-term benefits. So one way you do that is you say, hey, if we're, if we're gonna do a tax reform, we're gonna do a permanent reduction in a tax rate or, or something like that. And what's happening is he's kind of doing one-off little releases that aren't really gonna impact positively the tax structure of the state. So if we're gonna have those conversations, we absolutely wanna have them, but we need to look at it in a, in a, in a permanent stand, uh, permanent uh, function, not these one-off releases. Are Republicans just saying no to this because we're two months away from the election? Well, Republicans are saying no to it because, again, we, we don't come into session. We end session. We're a part-time legislature. We end session to try to make sure that we don't do political moves right near the election through the legislature. And it's a historical precedent. It's not the, the, the uh, current legislature. We've had this in place for a very long time. Uh, let's shift gears. You, you were part of a meeting with Milwaukee city leaders, yeah. a, a group of Republicans recently here in the city and talking not only about the RNC but sales tax shared revenue Milwaukee City leaders Democrats really hoping these conversations could uh, I guess start over again right yeah. after the RNC bring me inside what happened and what, what's your takeaway I'm extremely encouraged because we haven't sat down as two different groups like that in a very long time, I don't know the last time, but it was great to see and start a conversation on, hey, here's the issue that we have. Uh, we've got some great things happening in Milwaukee with the RNC coming here. It doesn't matter what side of the, the aisle you're at. The people from Milwaukee are excited to have that many people flow into the city. So that's a great thing. Um, I think there's some tough conversations that we have to get into as we look at how is Milwaukee going to fix the problems, again, that they've created. It's never good public policy for somebody else to come in and say, hey, we'll just take care of your problems that you created and there's no skin off your back. That's not good public policy. But we're open to discussions about what can we do to maybe help alleviate some of the pressure in addition 
Milwaukee, you have to come to us and show us what tough steps are you going to have to take. Are we going to see legislation on the floor of the Senate that would allow the county to raise the sales tax this upcoming session? I don't know that yet. This was the first conversation we've had uh, with Milwaukee. So what we'll do is when we get back into session, we'll talk with our colleagues. We'll continue meeting, hopefully, because, again, I think it was a great move, a great step to have for, for the relationships. There are some skeptics to what's happening behind the scenes. Kathleen Gallagher, she's now executive director of the Five Lakes Initiative. She wrote this week, the legislature has been starving Milwaukee for a long time. Why would it suddenly have a change of heart? It's hard to believe the goal is anything more than beefing up security for their convention. I would say it's, you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion, but Milwaukee has been consistently seeing what they're going to get from the state. And then as, as any family has to do, we have to look at our books and say, okay, what's our income going to be? And we have to make sure we live within our means. And I think part of the problem that they've had is they have, and this has been a long-term problem, this isn't just a recent thing, they haven't taken tough steps to fix that, hey, that, that, that income to expenditure gap, it's just not working. So we've got to make some adjustments to make sure we're closer. So I, I respect anybody who has an opinion on it, but you have to look at the facts in this situation. And unfortunately, Milwaukee has made some bad decisions that have led them to this point. Senate President Chris Capica, we appreciate your time. Good Thanks. to see you. Good to see you. Up next, new economic numbers out. The state of the economy, that student loan plan, a White House official standing by as the midterms now loom.